Hello and welcome to Simudan. Um, today I'm going to be um, driving on the Bakerloo line in Train Simulator World 2. So hopefully, if this all goes well, this will. Um, well, all I'm going to be doing is shunting out of the London Road depot and then back up the line into Elephant and Castle with a change of end on the train halfway. Um, Depending on time, I might even continue and uh, run it in service for a couple of stops along the line as well. Uh, but we'll see how we go. So, in the cab, I stand up and turn this thing on. So this has got a bit of a strange startup sequence where you have to Take it out of shutdown and move it all the way into off and release on the brakes. Let it level out. Hit Q, which is the audible warning reset for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why, but it won't work otherwise. Then put the brakes back on slightly, move it into forward, and now should start moving. So we've got a nice five mile an hour speed limit in this section. And it goes on for quite a while into the tunnel as well, so this bit's a little bit slow. Unfortunately, on this route, a lot of it's in the dark, so it might not be the most entertaining um, thing to watch but it should give you an idea hopefully of what to expect from um, from this route right here we go into the tunnel so from what um, they were saying on the live streams for release this is actually fairly accurate in terms of what a tube driver actually sees. There are plenty of cab ride videos where they've either got maintenance lights on in the tunnel so you can actually see where you're going, or um, they've got um, sort of a massive headlight on the front. But even with the usual headlights on a train, this is what you see. My headlight's currently on, I believe. Oh, there we go. This is what they see. This is it, as far as they see with headlights. Apparently the headlights aren't actually um, for the driver to see where they're going, but more for people to see when there's a train coming. So we've got a very steep gradient here. It makes the train quite difficult to control. So the reason that Dovetail went for Bakerloo Line and not any other underground railways in London is because the stock on the Bakerloo line is still quite old stock. This is stock from the 70s and therefore still requires some manual control. The uh, more modern stock actually runs on um, automated systems so although there is a driver they do very little and it wouldn't be the most interesting thing to do on a simulator okay. really struggling to keep the speed under control on this section so I always think of uh, the difference between the two dovetail train simulators the train simulator world and now the second iteration of that and uh, the Train Simulator 2020. I've always thought of the uh, difference between those as being 2020 is the more serious one, and this one's a little bit more light-hearted, adds in a few details, yeah, a few um, sort of objectives and whatnot for the more achievement huntery gamer type person. And if I'm honest, I actually think I prefer this iteration 
There we go. We're in a massive cavern here. So if I look on the map, you can see I'm just coming out onto the main tube line. So I need to pass back of my train over this and then go shift ends and go back toward Elephant and Castle. Oh, I need to pause then. So, did give this a little bit of an attempt earlier. I believe it's actually, there is a 25 mile an hour speed limit sign coming on on this side. And once I see that, then it's time to hit the brakes and bring it to a stop. There it is. So stop it here. Turn the cab lights on so we can actually see what we're doing. Okay, so I need to shut down this cab and take it right back down. Shut down. Reverser off and take the selection key out. Stand back up. Turn the master off and take that key out. Okay. Nice dark train. Let's get some lights on. Oh, no. Can't do that. I'll use my headlamp. There you go. Now, ideally, in an ideal world and in a real world, all these doors would be closed behind me, but I'm just going to leave them open in order to save a little bit of time. Now you'd think this is the end of the train, it's not. This is, um, or would have been a cab at some point before they actually extended these trains and made them seven car rather than I think five. So I've added a couple of carriages onto the end of them. And um, from what I hear, uh, from what I hear, that's actually true to life. Um, Dovetail have been have uh, tried to make this as realistic as possible. Right, sit in this seat, otherwise it doesn't register what I'm trying to do. Let's turn cap light on. Okay, control key in and on. And now we've got to go through this whole process again. Into forward. Uh, nope, sorry, into enter off and release let it level out a bit just going to get it I think back into forward and let's go so once we get to Elephant and Castle I'll um, have a look at what um, would happen to this service afterwards. I'm currently driving in timetable mode so all the trains genuinely do what they would do in a normal day. Um, it's not uh, completely true to life in the timetable. It's not a real life timetable. Um, what they've done is they've reduced, I think there's 600 services in a day on the real Bakerloo line, they've reduced that right down to about 200. Because the game still needs to work and not judder about. This not a no, this is Lambeth North, so I'm actually passing through this station. Speed this up a bit then. I love the attention to the sound of the train. You can hear the whir that you would usually hear when you're on one of these. It's just a nice touch. However, my ERC, and I'll demonstrate this in a minute, 
when we get to um, Elephant and Castle. My irk with it is that it doesn't work quite the same way in terms of sound in the stations. It just sounds a little bit too quiet. I don't know whether that's an omission or whether that's just um, the um, the restrictions that the game engines put on the developers. Here we go. Elephant Castle. The end there, we've got a red light. I'm not actually sure where the tunnel goes on from here, but this is the um, final stop um, on the line. And that's not just for the game, that's in reality, this is where it terminates. So stop it here. And it tells me, well done. So we'll return to free room. Back into shutdown. Get that out. There you go, a little bit fiddly. Let's turn on the lighting. And they even have the destination handle here, so I'm guessing. This one will end up going to Harrow and Woodstone, so we should probably set it on both ends. Now, those doors aren't going to open without power to the train, so let's put some power to the train. There we go. Oh, should probably turn it back off as well. There you go, look at me, in and out, in and out. There you go. We'll have a quick look around the station. So on PC, actually gets quite busy, as you can see. On, um, there's a collectible there. There you go, case in the map. trying to get down the platform, they all get in the way. Um, on um, console, um, from what I'm, what I've heard, um, you actually get fewer passengers because of the um, capacity of what the consoles can actually handle. So what's interesting is these actually work, sort of. What happens is um, it takes the uh, timetable and works out when a train will be in the platform or will be leaving according to the timetable. What it doesn't do is follow your train around and figure out what you're actually doing. Um, so it will only, will only um, work out next train according to the timetable except it won't clear it until your train has left the platform so it sort of works in some ways but not completely which is a really nice touch evidently no one wants to actually board the train so for those of you not familiar with it's a bit of screen tearing there that bothers me. Um, for those of you not familiar with um, the Train Sim World uh, franchise, the actually enables these collectibles and things like that. So where these screens weren't working, I approached them and turned them on, um, and that would on stay on all the time I play in this profile. 
and every station and every railway in this has different collectibles so this one has the screens that need fixing it has um, posters and it looks like I've already got this one but these newspapers weren't here I'm supposed to fill up the newspapers as well can't go that way So you see here, there is no train due, therefore it stays blank. Yet there are still people waiting on the platform. I love the way they've um, they've done this. It's so um, so nice um, in terms of this. It actually feels like you're on a real um, tube station platform, which I really like. Um, so, London Underground on this, they have, as always, you can jump on the track, as you could in the old one. However, you try going down the tunnel, it won't let you. Whether that's just them trying to ruin our fun, or whether there's a reason for that, I have no idea. But it feels like they're ruining our fun. <laughs> I'd like to... Uh, have a stroll down a tunnel. Right. Beauty of video is I, for you at least, can fast forward time. So that's what I'm going to do. Right, we're back again with passengers now loaded. So, providing I've set this up right, and I haven't because that still needs to go into forward, we should now be able to go for a little drive. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go a couple of stops up. And then uh, we'll head back um, to the menus and we'll have a quick look around uh, with some of the new features that came with this simulator. So, real world, London Underground. You pass the speed sign, it's when the front of the train passes the speed sign, you can then speed up. Train Sim World, London Underground. Not the case. Um, it's just a limitation in what the game can do, I believe. Um, so that It's program. It can, it's got to be. I think they've got to program it the same for all routes, and of course, overground routes. Handle it when the back of your train passes. The speed limit increases. So I was quite worried when I first booted this up, when it released yesterday um, about actually stopping these things because when you actually see what you can see ahead it's not all that much and my experience with train sim has been that trains take a while to stop these however don't first step of braking, I'm already slowing down quite considerably and will probably come well short of my stop marker. Such a nice easy train to control um, in terms of speed, at least on a steady gradient anyway. Now that confuses me. Why is it that these have been opening and closing on their own? They shouldn't be. I should be controlling that myself. And now they're closing on their own. Is the train going to drive off without me as well? No. 
no idea what's happening there. Well, we'll go out to Waterloo. Yeah, I still have to hit the close button in order f to get the train to move. Very strange. I shall likely take to the Dovetail forums a little later on and uh, give that a mention. Curious whether there might be um, an AI driver in the back cab operating the doors or something, but that shouldn't be happening. And if so, should he not also be driving? Although backwards. Which is something else that is different about these trains to the other trains in these simulators, is uh, you can't actually drive them backwards without first operating a cutoff. Still accelerating and... Now speeding. Still made it perfectly to a stop. And there it goes again, automatically opening the doors for me. So if we take a stroll down the train now, providing the AI's worked it alright, there should be some people in the train. And some of these should be boarding. But there are no people in the train. And no one's boarded. Ah. Huh. poster. Okay, that's interesting. Right, let's have a look in the menu. Okay, here we are in the first menu you'll come across, which is the uh, route selection. You've got sand patch grade in America, which runs these big heavy things. Got, I'm not even going to try to say that, but that route, um, which is in Germany. London Bakerloo line, which is the one we've just been in. London and England. Um, and then you've also got here East Coastway. This one doesn't come um, as standard with Train Sim World 2. Uh, this is part of the preserved collection where they are moving everything across or all but one route across from Train Simulator World 1. Um, and they're doing that gradually and East Coastway is one of the first ones done. Um, and uh, it's just a really enjoyable route um, but however it's, it's only if you own it in Train Simulator World 1 will you own the route in Train Sim World 2 otherwise you will have to buy it so if we go back into route select we have here your usual journey, which is uh, where it picks out different parts of it. It's, I think it's supposed to simulate a day in the life of a driver. So you will end up going from one end of the route to the other, and then back again, and then terminating halfway, and back again, and so on and so forth. If you just carry on doing train after train after train on that, we'll start you off with training, um, then it will end how to operate the train, then it will just move through different services, either in timetable mode or in scenario mode. Go explore. You've got the training here, which I've done both of, because it forced me. You can explore on foot and pick all the different types of weather and where on the line you would like to start. Then you've got the scenarios for which on London Underground uh, Bakerloo line there are five which uh, should be slightly more interesting than the timetabled stuff 
in order to play through and at some point I might do some videos following those through and then the timetable mode which is what we've just experienced which is just continuous play um, following the timetable until you choose to stop but you get to choose when exactly it is as well there you go this this is something I created on uh, Livery Maker earlier. Um, I'm not a great graphic designer, and in fact, lettering is a little bit off there. Um, but just thought I'd give it a go and see what uh, what I can come up with, and I'll show you that in a second. But you can then switch liveries to whatever you like, and then choose which train on the timetable you'd like to have a go with. So we've done, we did one at something like five o'clock in the morning, keep going and you'll find that trains will start to come back into the garage further up. Uh, like, my word it goes on for a while. Sure I just saw a depot. I don't know, but I'm sure it will be in there somewhere. There are a lot of services in there. I'd say there's 200 services on there to choose from, uh, on this line in particular. Then, going back, you've got tools. So you now have a scenario designer where you can create your own scenario, call it test, and you get to choose where you want to start, where you want to end and instructions in the middle. So we can start Baker Street for example, confirm that and we can go to Elephant Castle there we go. and then as we go through we can then go well actually we're gonna go to Regent's Park on the way and and so on and so forth. That's what you can do. And you've got livery editor. So you can choose any train on here that um so 72 stock, which is what we have already. So get this for you guys, we we'll call it video. Open that up and edit, and it will give you when it loads a blank train in which you can do whatever you like, you can paint it whatever colour you like, some real horrible colours if you want there you go, you can have a bright pink train if you really, uh, that's the sort of thing that floats your boat um, but you can do some pretty nice things with it so let's let's keep it white and you add different layers. You have signs. So you can add these and scale them down and put them where you want to put them. So uh, you can really go detailed with them. And uh, shapes, which most useful shape you're going to have is this one. I'll show you why. So remove it. And rotate it or do whatever you like with it that way. To be fair, I've only worked that one out myself. Um, scale it up and down. There is a way of changing the scaling. Um, how do we do that? I cannot remember for the life of me. As you can see, I don't really know what I'm doing with this. But the point is, you can then change this and uh, T. There we go, it's T. And you can make it bigger that way, smaller that way, and there we go.
bit fiddly. But you get the point. I can get it dead on and accurate. You can make yourself a nice little white door on the front there, look. And then you can change the colour of that. With it. Red. Or whatever colour you fancy. I'm sure there are other YouTubers out there that are far more sophisticated with graphic design than I am that will be able to show you that. So that pretty much wraps that up. Um, so um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please give me a like and uh, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon to keep up to date with uh, all my future videos uh, covering um, all sorts of uh, simulation gaming. Thank you for watching.